Hey there, fellow van builders. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jason, the van teacher. In today's lesson, we're covering how to add solar charging to your van's electrical system. This video is divided into five parts. Part one, sizing your solar array and mounting your solar panels. Part two, wiring your panels together and routing the wires into your van. Part three, choosing and connecting to a charge controller. Part four, connecting your charge controller to your batteries. And part five, testing and system monitoring. Let's get right to it. The first step in designing a solar charging system is to determine the size of your solar array. When making this decision, you'll want to take into consideration the available space for solar panels, the size of your battery bank, and the other methods of battery charging you plan to install. Perhaps most importantly, you'll want to estimate the amount of energy consumed by the loads you will be using. When I decided to purchase two solar panels, part of the decision was simply based on the fact that two panels fit nicely on my roof. Knowing that I would only have two panels, I began looking at my options for how many watts I could obtain. Solar panels are typically available in 100 to 200 watt sizes, and you generally pay for more wattage. I knew that I wanted to get as much wattage as I could out of the two panels, so I ended up purchasing a set of two 175 watt panels. I did calculate my energy use, and I also factored in that I would be installing alternator charging as well as shore power charging. Once you have decided on the number of solar panels, the next step is to determine where and how to mount them to your van. After carefully measuring my panels and roof space, I decided to build a simple, low-profile roof rack using 8020 aluminum and Ram Promaster roof rack adapters. The panels easily mounted to the 8020, and the 8020 easily mounted to my roof. I placed the panels close to the front of the van so that I would have room in the back for a roof deck and vent fan. In my previous van, the panels were more centered so that I could install a front and rear vent fan. If I change my mind about the mounting location, the 8020 aluminum rack allows the panels to slide back and forth along the length of the roof. Check out my roof rack installation video for more details on that. The next topic you need to address is how to connect your panels together and how to route the wires into your van. Let's start with connecting your panels together. You have three options, series, parallel, or series parallel. First, the definition of each one. In a series connection, the positive wires are connected to the negative. Output voltages add together and the output current remains the same. In a parallel connection, all of the positive wires are connected together and all of the negative wires are connected together. Output currents add together and output voltages stay the same. In a series parallel connection, strings of series connected panels are wired together in parallel. This type of connection may be used if your charge controller's voltage limit would be exceeded if everything was wired in series. Usually, this type of connection would be used in larger systems like 4 to 8 or even more panels. The type of connection you choose depends mainly on how you want to set up your system. Wiring in series is a popular choice for small van and RV applications for several reasons. First, because the voltage adds together, you can more easily charge your 12 volt batteries in low light and low levels of solar output. This is because typical 12 volt batteries need over 14 volts to begin charging and a 100 watt panel would need to output at least 75% of its capacity to provide that voltage. When you add additional panels in series, adding their voltage allows them to operate at 50% or even 25% of their capacity and still charge your battery bank. 
A second advantage of series wiring is that since amperage doesn't increase, smaller gauge wire can be used. This makes wiring easier and less expensive. Another advantage is that no additional connectors are needed when connecting the positive wire to the negative. On the other hand, series connections do not perform well in partial shade. This may be an important consideration if your installation location is shaded by other equipment on your roof or if you frequently park in shaded locations. Series wiring also requires MPPT charge controllers, which are not as budget friendly as PWM controllers, which are used in parallel configurations. Once you have decided how to connect your panels together, it's time to figure out how to bring the wires into your van. Note that wires are now live, so proceed with caution. You may want to cover your panels with cardboard until you have installed a solar disconnect or you can complete your installation at night. The most direct route for running your wires will likely be through the roof and straight down to your charge controller. You may also be able to route the wires through an existing opening to avoid drilling through the roof. Keep in mind, however, the longer the wire, the more voltage drop you will have and the less efficient your charging system will be. If you want to maximize efficiency, use the shortest route. When going through your roof, take several precautions to prevent leaks and protect your wires. Use a combiner box or wire ports to accomplish this and use plenty of roof lap sealant to keep water out. Also be sure to paint over the drilled holes with rust proof paint and insert a rubber grommet into the opening to prevent wire damage. Now that you have the wires inside the van, you must install a solar disconnect to shut down power from your solar array, not only because it's nice to be able to do that, but it's also a code requirement for PV systems. Be sure to use a dual pull disconnect like this one and not a positive only disconnect in order to satisfy this code requirement. Wiring in your disconnect is as simple as connecting the positive wires to the positive terminals and the negative to the negative on both sides of the switch. Leave the disconnect in the off position until you have completed and tested your installation. After the wires leave the disconnect, route them to your charge controller. As for wire size, if you are connecting your panels in series, the current will be relatively low and 6 to 12 gauge wire will be appropriate. I used 10 gauge wire for the solar extension cables that run from the panels to the solar disconnect and 6 gauge wire from the solar disconnect to the charge controller. When selecting the proper charge controller, calculate the voltage and current you will have coming from your solar panels. The simplest way to do this will be to enter the panel's information into a charge controller calculator such as this one. The calculator will then help you select the proper controller. Alternatively, you can determine this yourself by following the charge controller's manufacturer recommendations. For my 350 watt system, with a total open circuit voltage of 54 volts at the lowest possible operating temperature, has a maximum output of 25 amps. I chose to use the Victron Smart Solar MPPT 100-30 since the max voltage of my system is well under 100 volts and the current is under 30 amps. Connecting to the controller is rather straightforward as it only has positive and negative inputs from the panels and positive and negative outputs to the battery. It also has an equipment ground that connects to the negative battery bus bar. When connecting the positive and negative six gauge wire from the solar panel disconnect to the charge controller, I used ferrules to terminate the wires and inserted them into the rising clamp and tightened it down. Now that the charge controller is connected to the solar panels, you can then proceed to connect it to your battery bank. Be sure to disconnect your batteries before proceeding. The charge controller will have an equipment ground that needs to be connected to the negative bus bar on your battery bank. 
I used one quarter inch lugs to connect the six gauge equipment ground wire on the controller side and a 5 16th inch lug to connect it to the Lynx distributor. The six gauge output wires from the controller heading to the Lynx distributor are terminated with ferrules on the controller side and 5 16th inch lugs at the Lynx distributor. Fuse size at the Lynx distributor can be calculated by multiplying the amperage of the controller by 1.2, which equals 36 amps. Using 6 gauge wire at this connection results in a recommended fuse size between 40 and 60 amps. I installed a 60 amp fuse as seen here. The Lynx distributor is then connected to the batteries using 4 aught wire with a 200 amp fuse in line with the positive cable as close to the batteries as possible. Both the positive and negative cables between the links and the batteries need to be the same length, including the length of the monitoring shunt on the negative cable and the shutoff switch on the positive. I measured this from the negative terminal on battery 2 to the links negative terminal and from the positive terminal on battery 1 to the links positive terminal. Now that all connections have been made, Test your system visually by following the wires to make sure positives are connected to positives and negatives are connected to negatives. To test your system with a voltmeter, first confirm that both the battery disconnect and solar disconnect are switched off. Then turn on the battery switch and use a voltmeter to check for proper connections between the battery and the charge controller. Test at the positive and negative output terminals on the solar charge controller. You should get a reading of between 11 to 14.6 volts. Next, turn on the solar disconnect and check the voltage at the charge controller inputs. This should be the output voltage from your panels. Finally, check your monitoring system to see that everything is operating correctly. Once your system passes these tests, you can leave it switched on. Now sit back and enjoy your work. Congratulations on building a safe, reliable, and efficient solar power charging system. If you would like additional information on van electrical systems, check out my camper van electrical overview video. Or for more detailed tutorials, check out my videos on installing shore power, DC to DC chargers, quick electrical tips covering the do's and don'ts, and a complete guide to DC circuit wiring. If you would like to know how much my electrical system costs, or any other budget-related items, check out my video on how much our 2023 Ram Promaster costs to build. Also, check out the links in the description below for more information on any of the items mentioned in this video. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below.